All right, folks, welcome to Lid Tips. Lid Tips is the radio show where we talk about and discuss topics of interest to ham radio or amateur radio operators. In this particular episode, we're going to discuss websites that you can get information around digital mobile radio or DMR radio. So if this sounds like something that may be of interest to you, why don't you do yourself a favor, go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Oh yeah, before we do that, if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment below with a comment, recommendation, suggestion. I'll do my best to respond. Also, we started a Patreon account, so you now have the opportunity to support the channel in that way if you choose. All right, go get your cold one. All right, hopefully everybody made it back. There's no need to panic, folks. There'll be links for all of these websites in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started. When we start out, we are going to take a look at micklore.com slash DMR. And he's actually got a pretty good website in general, but also his DMR information is fantastic. So when you go to his website, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. And you can take a look, and he's got support information, code plug information. He's got reviews on tons of different DMR radios, and he does a pretty good job with all this. Um, and then down here, he's got a couple of other documents that you might want to take a look at. Like, for example, here is uh, a basic tutorial, and uh, you can pull it down in PowerPoint, or you can take a look at it in PDF. We'll just take a quick look at the PDF. And he goes over the history. He goes over audio quality. I'm not going to go over this in a lot of detail. I'm going to leave that for you. My job here is just to expose you to this information. Uh, he talks about time slots, spectrum efficiency, all the neat stuff that you need to know. And what's important is, is that when you get into DMR, a lot of the terminology is a little bit confusing because it's much different than analog radio. And then by going over documents like this, you kind of learn that terminology and it makes it a little bit easier for you to navigate and get into DMR. Let's just take another look at his website. See here he has information on database generators where you can download your contact databases, information about code plugs, information about hotspots. It's really a good website and I encourage everybody to check it out. The second website that I wanted to show is called RadioID.net. And the reason I'm showing you this website is, is that you actually need to come here and go to register to create yourself a DMR ID. You have a call sign as a licensed amateur. You need to associate your call sign to a DMR ID. You'll use this DMR ID to identify your hotspot if you choose to have one, and also you put it on your radio. When people call you, they're actually calling your DMR ID, not your call sign. So it's pretty helpful, and it's a very important thing to have. And then you can come down here, agree to the terms and conditions, and then fill out this register account. I believe it takes about two or three days for you to get your DMR ID assigned. Now this is a website that I go to all the time, Amateur Radio Notes. And uh, when I opened it up this morning, I was a little bit disappointed. He says he's gone hiking and he's not sure when or even if he'll be back. But this was probably the most up-to-date website or resource I could find when working with Pi Star. Now, Pi Star is an operating system that I run on a Raspberry Pi with a digital modem board. You can see some of that in past videos. Check out my DMR playlist. But uh, he has documents around uh, installing Pi Star, making all the configuration changes. And this website used to walk through them, but now they're all linked here. This means that the, data, the information or the data could become dated over time. It doesn't look like he's going to keep updating it. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But, uh, for example, here's a document called Playing with Pi Star. And it has learning Pi Star, downloading, flashing Pi Star, booting it up, performing initial configurations. I'm just going to scroll through these. This is very well documented. And as I mentioned, whenever I would have a problem or a challenge using my Pi Star hotspot, I would come to this website, and uh, here's how you can set up your Wi-Fi. This is something that everybody has trouble with. Um, I would come to this website, and I would get information, and I would get the answers that I needed. Hopefully, he decides to come back and continue to maintain this excellent resource. So here's the Pi Star website. Uh, this is at the home site. You can go through here. You can find out a little bit more about what it is. Uh, there's an information tag. And this would take you to what is Pi Star, and I believe that they have a wiki that you can take a look at here. Um, with Pi Star, you can connect to multiple DMR networks, and I believe I covered that in my DMR for Beginners video. But uh, there's Brandmeister, which is very popular, DMR Plus, TGIF, um, D-Star, uh, Yesu System Fusion. 
you're not limited to just DMR. You can use other digital modes with your with your radio and with your with your Pi Star hotspot. Most folks are on the Brandmeister network, so I've included a link for Brandmeister.network. And when you come here, you can register with Brandmeister and you can register a self uh, user account, a self healing user account. I think it's what it's called. Maybe it's a self help user account. I don't remember exactly. But there's tons of information here about the Brandmeister network, how to configure your hotspot. And then also, when you create an account here, you actually link your hotspot to Brandmeister, and you can push additional configuration around static or dynamic talk groups, security modes, all kinds of interesting things. So I really would encourage everybody to initially, when you fire up your hotspot, go on and get on Brandmeister. It's a good place to learn, and it's a good place to get information. Now, Brandmeister has a subsite called hose.brandmeister.network. And here I can see all of the different talk groups that are in use right now in Brandmeister. So let me go ahead and click on one of these and maybe we'll be able to hear something. Yeah. Now I'm not sure what the story is with this guy, but let's go ahead and check a different one. Here you can see two people are stepping on top of each other. So hopefully this clears up. I will say that Hoseline is not the most reliable website. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about DMR-MARC. This is probably the oldest DMR network in the United States. And uh, you can see here it's got over 500 repeaters in 83 countries with over 144,000 uh, registered users. And it's a pretty good network. A lot of times, at least where I live, if I'm going to use a local DMR repeater, it's on DMR-MARC. Uh, the main reason I wanted to come here is, one, is exposure to the website where you can get more information about DMR Mark. But uh, right here is an amateur radio guide to DMR. And this is the first document that I read when uh, I was getting into DMR. And if you take a look down here, this John Burningham, W2XAB, he's actually in a couple of different YouTube presentations that you should Google or you should search on YouTube and find them and watch them extremely knowledgeable gentleman on DMR. And this is kind of the de facto standard document uh, for DMR Mark, if you want to learn about that particular environment. Again, this does a really good job explaining the concepts and the terminologies that you'll hear when you're experimenting with DMR. Just scrolling down, he talks a little bit about equipment, talks about what DMR is, compares it to analog, and he takes a look at two slot TDMA or, or uh, time division multiple access. And he does a pretty good job explaining what that is. He talks about talk groups, zones, color codes, uh, code plugs. Uh, again, it's a very handy document, and it helped me out quite a bit. Now, this is a little bit different, and I wanted to share this website. Um, it's called uh, Digital Frequency Search, and then you can put in your location, and you can find out what digital frequencies are in use around your house or your QTH or your work location or whatever. But uh, what's handy is, is that this is actually made for scanners, and then you can export these frequencies and load them into a digital scanner. But I like to come over here, and I like to go to the DMR frequency search. And so you can come over here, and you can do a search for DMR uh, frequencies that are in use uh, in, your, in your area. So here I'm going to do a DMR frequency search by county. So I put in my county, and I put in my state, and then I click search. And it pulls back all these different frequencies. It tells the entity that's got that uh, frequency registered and then the eligibility activity. It also shows the call sign that that uh, operates under. So for example, I can go ahead and just pick this one and it pulls up the uh, FCC universal licensing system and I can get more information there. Now what's handy about this, let me go back to this site, is, is that in certain cases I can go ahead and I can tune to these frequencies on my DMR radio and then I can monitor them. I don't want to transmit on them because I don't have a right to. And also these are not uh, amateur radio frequencies, but it makes it fun to use your DMR radio if you can receive on some of these frequencies to listen to what's out there. I like to do that anyway. And we're rounding the corner and almost done here. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about Bridgecom systems. Bridgecom publishes a lot of information. They sell DMR radios, repeaters, and uh, different amateur radio equipment. But uh, they have a vested interest in getting folks up and running on DMR, which tends to be a little bit confusing to new operators. So they have some information here, some YouTube websites that you can watch to learn a little bit about DMR. And then you can download this easy three-step guide. Now, I don't know how they condense DMR uh, into three steps, but maybe they've done a fine job. You can just go ahead and sign up here and then click send me my guide and they'll send you this guide. I'm not going to pull it up. I did take a look at it a while back. 
I'm not exactly familiar with it now. It may have been updated, but it's a, it's a supposedly pretty good resource, and I hear people talk about it all the time. So go ahead and check it out. And the last site that I wanted to show is amateurradio.digital. Now, there's other places on the Internet where you can get your contact ID database and download it to your radio. What happens here is, is that when I make a call to a talk group or to an individual and they respond back, instead of seeing their DMR ID, on certain radios I can see other metadata or information. I can see your name, your location, uh, your license class in some cases, and I can see your call sign. And it makes it a little bit easier to just refer to somebody by their name, their location, or their call sign than it is their six-digit, I think it's six-digit, it might be seven-digit DMR ID. Um, it's pretty handy. I did this. Uh, I believe you get one free download, and then uh, to get multiple downloads, you have to do a donation of $12 a year. It's a dollar a month. I've got a few DMR radios, so what I can do is I can just come here. I can pick my radio from the Digital Contacts Wizard. Let's just say uh, 878, and then I click Next. And then it's going to ask me to go ahead and log in below. I'm not going to do that now. I've got videos on showing this, but it's a great website, and it's a good place to get your contact ID database. And folks, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope it was helpful. Again, I just wanted to expose you to some of the DMR websites that I use or have used in the past to get up and running on DMR. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.